Welcome back to our tech. So all that noise you're hearing right now is from the Cooler Master ML240L RGB. It's a nice cooler with no performance issues. The only thing that lets it down is a lot of noise from those whiny little fans. What I replaced it with is the Deepcool 240 Castle EX. It's a great looking cooler. Let's go ahead and unbox this. So undoubtedly the Castle 280 or the 240 EX do not have RGB fans. So it may not be as attractive as your Cooler Master, but it's got a decent looking pump with RGB lighting options when I was buying it. I did see the pictures, they looked pretty nice. These support your polychrome and other RGB syncing options that your motherboard has. So it works with almost any kind of motherboard which has RGB headers and RGB lighting option controllers. So this particular uh, liquid cooler has something called as the leak proof, anti-leak technology. So it's an added bonus. We'll read about it a little later. I like the packaging, pretty decent. And yeah, that, that makes this really special, this specialized rubber bracket inside. It's a technology unique to deep cool and it uses some sort of a elastic pressure release system a small little rubber gasket which kind of uh, enables it to equalize atmospheric pressure the moment it senses more pressure and this kind of avoids any leak from the radiator itself so that's really cool so it's also available in white and it costs a little more inside the box you have either the 280 or the 240 mm radiator both look the same in terms of packaging i initially bought the 280 thinking this would fit inside a h500 but it doesn't fit and I'll show you how later. So the 280 comes with pre-installed thermal paste, so does the 240. And this 280 cooler is also compatible with your Thread Threadripper series of AMD processors. The base plate, as you can see, is really huge on these coolers. So the thermal paste is pre-installed and looks solid. So at the side, you can see the cables for the headers, the, the pump cooler, as well as uh, your RGB controller. It's also a good amount of uh, flex on those tubing. There is braiding as well, so uh, should be easy for you to mount. The pump itself has got this nice mirror finish in front, and uh, it's also got a protection, uh, pr protective plastic covering in front. It's supposed to have a customizable logo insert that you can use. And if you take off that cover, you can see that the logo can be replaced inside. We'll come to that a little later. And all you have to do is just close that and that's it. The radiator is pretty standard looking, although it's a little bigger than your regular radiator, simply because of uh, that additional protection they've given you the leak proof technology makes it slightly longer than the conventional radiators so you can see that there's a warning there which says do not remove so all these leak proof technologies have some sort of a projection there and the you know the braid on the cooling pipe is really nice this is not the regular nylon or strong or the you know plasticky feel that you get this is more of a uh, texturized fabric finish and this is the extra length i was talking about so this is slight increase in length let's get some of the other components inside so you get a lot of fittings as with any other aio so this supports all the latest uh, generation of processors right from amd's to the intel's including the i9 and there's a plastic bag with more plastic bags inside and each of those have names for different types of uh, fittings that you would want to go with so 
So let's open one of these bags. By the way, this uh, AIO comes with its own RGB controller in case your motherboard doesn't support it. So yeah, it's got one of these just like the Cooler Master did. And all you got to do is just hook it up to the pump and the other end goes to a SATA port. It's a 5 volt plug. On the other hand, if you do have RGB headers on your motherboard, you got to use this cable, which is really cool. Again, I like the way Deepcool has put uh, name tags on each of these wirings. So based on your motherboard, you will know which one to exactly use. So big thumbs up for that. So it makes it easier for you to fit them. And you know, you don't end up bending or breaking any of the wires. There's also a nice user manual, which helps you fix AIOs. AIOs are very difficult to fix for someone who's not tried them before, but it's a good project to be honest. And this is the, you know, logo plate that you get in case you want to put your own logo inside the AIO cooler. You can add a sticker on there and place it inside. Now, inside the box, one of the main reasons why I picked this up is simply because it was one of the quietest, uh, if not the coolest AIOs out there. So this fan is called the TF series of fans. It comes both for the 140 as well as the 120 mm. Features these extra fins at the end of each blade of the fan. And they're supposed to help uh, with the noise acoustics. It kind of uh, silences the fan. So they're a lot quieter and comparable with noise levels to the NZXT series of coolers. And even the patterns look very nice on this fan. Maybe a little difficult to clean them, but uh, you never know. No RGB, unfortunately, on the fans, but uh, should be good. So these are PWM fans. They had Gamerstorm badging on it all over the place. So this is the H500 right above it. You would see that it has a mount for the 280mm radiators. Right now it has the Cooler Master inside, which is just the 240mm. So it can fit the 280. So I like the fact that, you know, when I was taking off my old Cooler Master, it's got these thumb screws, which really help you take off the fan so easily. Your deep cool AIO doesn't have removable screws, thumb screws. So here's the size difference. So this is the difference between the 280 as well as the 240 mm radiators. So my computer is basically uh, an AMD computer, the AM4 chip. So I'm going to use the fittings for that. So the processor is off, just clean off. And the back plate is actually fitted with these four screws. It does shake a bit, but that's how it works. So no thumb screws means you'll have to use a regular screwdriver to get these in place. So these are the regular screws which you get to fix the fan. And this is the base plate. So with the AM4 fitting, this is how it looks. And with a little bit of effort, I was able to get it in there. And then came the problems with the 280mm radiator. It simply wouldn't fit. So the problem was that the fan was actually touching the RAM chips. And the 280mm radiators were useless even though this cabinet actually supports it. The motherboard design or I don't know what actually is wrong with it but it wouldn't let a 280mm radiator fit easily even though it has the slot. So in case you're buying the 280mm on a Cooler Master H500, please don't. So I switched back to the 240mm radiator fans. I changed the whole device. Finally managed to get the fans in place. The radiator is actually sitting fine and the AIO pump is fixed successfully. And with a little bit of cable management, everything was ready. When I powered it up, I saw that it's already syncing with the motherboard lights and it looks beautiful. I might have put the tubing the wrong way around and even the logo is up, upright, but we can fix that. 
but it works fine even without the CPU being turned on. The lights work along with the motherboard and it's nice to see that. Works like a nice standby light. And once you remove that cap, the logo is easily accessible. So all you have to do, I mean this is even working and I'm doing it as it works so there's no problem with that. So all you've got to do is just pull that Gamer Storm logo out. As simple as that. It's just a plastic disc. You can replace it with uh, the disc they provided you, the plain one. Or in case you want to tilt the logo, just turn it over and push it back in. As simple as that. So all you got to do is just paste your own sticker on it and you're good to go. Once that's ready, put on the cap, give it a little bit of twist. It's also got this nice ring of light just at the back of that. Makes it look really cool. Now the noise levels. Now this is one of the main reasons I had to make the switch and you know the Cooler Master fans were really really noisy. So the room noise, I mean, even with uh, no load on the cooler, you know, it used to fluctuate between 20 and 25. And when you s run something heavy, like a 3D modeling tool or something like a Cinebench, everything is going to go haywire. The noise goes up and it's not that it's too loud. It, it fluctuates between 27, 28 de decibels, but the fan makes a lot of noise. The temperatures are fine. I mean, they're they're all between, you know, 40 to 42 degrees. I'm sure even the deep cool is going to get similar temperatures, but it's just too noisy. So I ran Cinebench again with the new AIO, the deep cooled Castle 240. And I just checked the temperatures just to ensure that it's working fine. And to my surprise, it, it did. I mean, the temperatures did not cross 39 degrees uh, while running Cinebench. So this 100% CPU, this is an AMD uh, 3500. And here's the sound of the fan. It's really faint. It's just the sound of air passing out. It's much better than the wine that you get from the Cooler Master CPU cooler. So it's a good switch according to me. So that's my short review on the Deep Cool Castle 240. It's really worth the price you pay for. It's about eight and a half thousand on Amazon India. And for that price, you're getting something which is as good as your NZXT or some of your more expensive coolers in the market. And you know, this is a good looking cooler too. So there's no issues with it. And the fans are really quiet. I'll leave links in the description below in case you're interested uh, to buy it. Um, I'm rest assured that you know, you're not gonna be unhappy with this cooler's performance. Cools really well, not noisy. If you like this video, please do hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching our take and I'll see you on the next one.